Hi everyone, how's it going? Welcome in. Um, please let me know if the picture is too dark or too dim. Um, usually with like a drawing and sketch, it's um, I just have it dim for a little bit while we do the rough sketch of the drawing. But then I make it a little bit brighter. Hello, hi Mark. <laughs> Happy Friday, everyone. Welcome in. Um, so for this one, it's similar to my ho horse drawing that I did a while back where you just need a pencil. And if you want to use some Q-tips, which I know it's a little weird, but they're great for shading. <laughs> um, so feel free to use any Q-tips. You can also use some paper to shade if you like. Um, I'm great. It's I'm happy because it's Friday. <laughs> And you might need an eraser. We're not going to do too much erasing, so you don't have to worry too much about that. But we are going to be sketching the drawing very light at first, and then it's going to get darker within its the, with just using our pencils. So if you have different weights of pencils, awesome, use them. Uh, but you only if you don't have weights, different weights of pencils, so like a two B or three B or six B, whatever. Um, you actually will be able to do it just with a regular pencil because I did this whole drawing just with one 2B pencil and I'll show you how using different line quality and like shading pressure will allow you to have different tones within your own drawing. Okay. So another thing, um, if, if you feel like I'm going too fast, you are uh, able to rewind the video which I didn't know. <laughs> I know it's live, but I do believe you're allowed, you can rewind it and it just comes back to the live time. So just keep that in mind. It also will be a recorded video as well um, after the event as well. Okay. Okay. So I think we're going to get started. I don't have to take too much time or uh, going over um, materials. So um, like I said, we're just going to start with our pencil. And now when we start, make sure you're sketching super light because we're going to start with really simple shapes just to get the proportions right. And then we're going to draw on top of it really dark. Okay. Oh, okay. So it's Saturday over there. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, welcome in. That's amazing. You're all the way. You're in the future. <laughs> That's so cool. Some of you must be coming from different much different places, which is really cool. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Um, you want to make sure that you notice that the the deer, the majestic deer, also called a buck, this is a male deer, um, it's going to be on the, not right in the middle of it, it's actually going to be a little bit to the side. So just enough that we can see the body some of the body, not the whole body, but what is in the middle is the antlers, okay? So keep that in mind when you're drawing it. Oh, cool. That's so awesome. So some of you are in the future because <laughs> it's Saturday with you guys. I'm just going to fix them. There we go. Put it a little bit higher. Okay. All right. So I'm going to get started. We're just going to start with the head. So I do want you to put a little dot wherever you want to place the, the first circle of the head. So for example, mine's going to be on this direction. It's going to go this way. Yours can be on either side. So it doesn't have to be perfectly on a specific side. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with a really sketched out circle. Doesn't have to be perfect. This is going to be the main head right here. You don't want it to be too dark, but not too light either. So just dark enough that you can see it. But the dark, it's just the darker you make it, the harder it's going to be to um, erase um, or work with. So it also is going to be in a three quarter view. So we have to make sure that we keep that in mind when we're drawing it, okay? You'll notice that there will be a second circle. So this is definitely very similar to the horse drawing where we did two circles. If you were in that, that might help you a little bit to, to kind of be familiar with that technique where we draw kind of like the head and the snout. 
and then we connect it. So I'm going to do the, um, the stout a little bit lower, not as low as you would for the horse, for like a horse, because they don't have the, that big of a snout. So we're just going to sketch a smaller circle. And it's okay if it overlaps your bigger circle. Just be a nice little circle right here. Okay, and it's definitely much lower. So it's not too high up, it's very at the end. It's just overlapping a little bit. Tiny little amount. There we go. And so basically what we're doing is we're going to be kind of making all the proportions um, as best as we can. And then we're gonna start creating all the smaller details inside. So the first thing we want to do is we want to connect the circle. We want to make it look like the head. So we want to make sure that it's one shape, one whole shape, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to start connecting this part right here by doing a line inside that is going to go up. like that. And you'll notice it's a little bit bumpy here. That's kind of what you want because there's going to be some room for the eye here, around here. But we're not gonna place the eye just yet. So whenever you are connecting it, you do wanna, you can sketch a little bit darker this time because we're actually making the face a little bit more solid. And depending on the size of your uh, circle, you might not have to add the little chin. It can be connected already. So you can just have it connected here. Now, because it is on a side view, on like a three quarter view, the, the side of this, of his face is very pronounced here, right? So he has a very pronounced jawline. And that's kind of something we want to focus on. So from here, we're going to go a little bit down like this. Maybe around that much. So I made it first, but then I think it needed to be down a little bit more. So it's going to look a little bit awkward at first, but don't worry. It will make sense once we add all the other details. And then we're going to add a line like that. And I'm just going to bring out the, the nose a little bit more. So it's okay for you to play around with like the proportions. If something doesn't look right, it's just a matter of moving it a little bit. So for example, the nose to me didn't look right. So I just moved it a little bit like that. This part doesn't have to be so, so bent. So we're going to make it a little bit more straight like that. So it's kind of an awkward shape for sure. So it, it is a little bit tricky, but don't worry. It does make more sense once everything's kind of added. The thick neck, they have really, really thick muscular faces and the super thick uh, necks. Just like that. And it's up to you how big you want it to be. So maybe if you wanted it to be bigger, you just keep going down a little bit, right? So it's just how you feel you might want it to look. Okay, now this part, this line was 
here, but you're welcome to move it a little bit. Just make sure it is kind of uh, curved and not super straight. Okay, because you do want it to be kind of curved going along the, the face. And it doesn't have to touch the circle. It's just a guideline. Now, one thing that um, tends to help me is placing a curved line across so I know where I'm going to put my eyes. I like to make a, a line that is curved very lightly and then a line over here. Especially if it's going to be a three quarter view. Now some people don't like to do these lines because it might be getting in the way. So as long as you do them really light, it's easier to erase them. Okay, so now that we have those, we can add, I think the head is a nice height. I think it, they do have a large area here. You can see that. So I'm actually going to add my first ear and it's gonna come out this way. One going out this way. You could definitely change the position of your ear. Maybe you wanted to have them a little bit more high up. That's okay too. And then this ear is going to be coming out this way. The ears kind of look like um, cow ears, kind of. <laughs> so feel free to have fun with like the placement. I, I really like to move them a little bit and have them in different positions. Just because I enjoy how that looks. But maybe you want this one a little bit more straight. That's okay. Okay. Beautiful. So now what I do think you can erase is this, the circle right here, this line. You can erase this one because you don't really need it anymore. And we can make this a little bit lighter over here. Oops. Sorry, all my eraser little things are coming out. Okay. So now you want to decide where your nose is going to kind of close off a little bit. So they do have a little bit of a snout. So I'm going to do a line here and a curved line like this. But the reason I, it's more intentional, right? So I'm kind of placing it where I wanted to place it. And the nose, you don't want to put it high up. You want to put it kind of right here at the bottom because if you put it too high up, it's gonna look like the nose is the, the um, what do you call it? The snout is kind of flat. So we're just going to do kind of like a heart shape like this. And I'm gonna put a line across where the nostrils are. And you can shade it in a little bit. But I like to leave the top of the nose a little bit white. Okay. Beautiful. And then we're going to do a little line. It's going to come out this way. And it's going to come out this way. Something like that. So it can be as much of a side view as you want it to be. So it doesn't have to be completely on a side view. So this line right here, you can bring it up a little bit so that you know where the eye, your first eye is going to be actually really small. Very similar to the horse situation. <laughs> the horse drawing. 
I'm just going to place my little eye. But notice how I use the line that I made here. That's my guideline. Okay. So we have our first eye here. Now, I would be wondering where to put my second eye, but because I have my line here, I'm able to know that my eye is going to be right about here. Maybe right about there. Something like that. So it's kind of right in the, kind of in line with the jawline. And there we go. So now you don't need your lines across the face. You can just erase them a little bit. So you kind of start seeing the, the deer's face a little bit more. It doesn't look as shapey <laughs> or geometrical. And we can add a little bit of um, lines inside the ear. Very, very lightly. So this is a good um, drawing to like kind of have control over your pencil and the line quality. So you don't want to do like super rough lines. You want to have them really nice and soft, especially when you get into little places like the eyes or the face. Beautiful. Now the eye, I'm gonna zoom in for the eye, like the details of the eye really quickly, and then I'll zoom out, okay? Uh, let me see. I think that's as close as I can get, okay. So for the eye, um, you want to have basically two circles. So you can have a little circle like this and leave that white. And then underneath that, you're going to do a dark and color that in. However, you do want to shade in a little bit of that space so that it's not as, so it looks like there's a little bit of a shadow inside of the eye. You would do the same thing with both sides. But this one is a little bit trickier because it's so much smaller. But you're doing the same thing. You're just doing a little white circle and then a the black circle inside. And then just a little bit of shading inside. See? Perfect. So they do have um, these kind of like tough hairs on the top of their head <laughs> so make sure that you add them you can add them lightly at first and then you can darken them out after a little bit so i'm just doing little textures with my pencil really quick little lines like this and if you have, like I said, if you have like a, a little Q-tip, you can use your finger. I don't suggest using your finger too much because your fingers have oil and it makes it harder to erase things when you have, when you, you use your finger. A finger is fine to use though. I'm just saying it has oils and it will stain your paper a little bit. So it's always good. You can even use a tissue paper. That one's really good. Yeah. I've never seen um, a buck. I've only seen like de like a deer, like a mama deer and her babies. Um, so they would be a sight to see because of the horns. <laughs> but yeah, I'm wondering if any of you guys have seen um, wild deer around your areas. You can comment and let me know because that's really cool. So at this point, I'm just adding a little bit of shading on top with my pencil. Very lightly, I'm adding some little textured areas around the eye. Let me 
think this. You have to have a lot of control over your 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 shading, okay? So you just don't want to go too tough in. You want to start really lightly and kind of build it up. Oh, cool. That's awesome. That's really cool. I would love to see that in real life. I mean, I think it would be scary because they look like such majestic animals. Um, but I guess if you leave them alone, they leave you alone. <laughs> but they look really, really beautiful to look at. There is going to be a little bit of shading on the nose here. So you can start with your pencil and then kind of drag it out with the Q-tip if you want to. I'm just going to drag it out a little bit. Like that. And I always do like really harsh shading on my original and then my second one ends up being like super tender and <laughs> nicely shaded, like a little bit more gentle. So that you can't go wrong with it. Oh, wow. Thank you so much, Kadria. Kad Hopefully I said your name right. That's so nice. Yeah, I'll definitely keep, your, keep that in mind for sure. It's hard getting reference pictures for these animals because um, there's so many to choose from. But most of the time, I feel like they don't have, like, good view of it. <laughs> so it was hard to find. If, I had to get, like, a different reference pictures all over the place to get a good one. So that's really awesome that you got a couple. Okay. So we have the face pretty much um, good. We added a little bit of shading. We're going to cut. We could go back to it to add more shading after. We're just going to keep going with the body and the rest of the drawing. Okay. I'm just going to zoom it out a little bit. Oops. Oh, no. There. Okay. Um, beautiful. Let me know if it's too dim for you guys. I can bring it up a little bit more. Um, yeah. Okay. So you notice the head is definitely not in the center. It's more to the, to the right or the left if you're seeing it from a different angle. Um, so the neck is actually going to start all the way from the ear up here. So don't start it from here. You're going to start it from here. You're going to do a little line. And you're going to start bringing it down like this. Oop. Maybe a little bit more down this way. So you can always adjust it as much as you need to. I think my first line was a little too thick. So I just made, made it a little bit better. So maybe, maybe some of you might have not enough room. Um, like maybe you made the head a little too much to the left. That's okay. You don't have to have a specific amount showing. This is just how much I have available. Um, I'm just thinking in terms of height. There you go. I'm going to bring this out a little bit more. And it's so funny because they look so different without their horns. Um, <laughs> so once you add the horns, you really can tell what it is. Okay. So this is part of the neck and then a little bit of the back. Now this, the rest of the, the neck here is very, very thick. So you're actually going to start from the chin here. And you can start by doing these little lines, kind of fluffy lines like this. And it's actually going to go inward a little bit and then back out. So there's a little bit of a step down here like that. Now, if you have too much room at the bottom, for example, my paper is a little bit longer. You can always add maybe a little bush or a rock right here. So I'm just adding a little rock, a rock, because I kind of want it to look like he's kind of creeping out of the forest. But maybe you don't need to do that part, okay? It's just up to you. 
beautiful. Now, I suggest doing a couple of little hairs and lines going down this way, just so that there's a little bit of a separation between this area and this area. Okay. And we're gonna go back to it and shade it a little bit more, but we want, I just wanna make sure we add all the, 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 the things that we need to add to it. Cute, okay. He's looking handsome. <laughs> so now we're gonna add the horns. Now the horns are, um, that you can't really go wrong with them. Like you can definitely make them look a little bit different if you if you want to. Um, it's just important that they are a little bit geomet uh, symmetrical on both sides and they kind of curve up. So we're just going to start with the first horn now you don't want it to be perfectly um, straight. You want them to have a little bit of a bumpy ride almost. So you want them to kind of look almost like tree branches, maybe a little bit smoother. Like that. And then the other one's gonna be coming out this way. Like that. So we start with two little ones on here. Also, do you, any of you guys know, I know that mooses um, shed their horns, um, but I don't know if bucks do. So I'm just curious if anybody knows that. <laughs> okay. So we have our two little ones here. Um, and then we're going to start building the other two. So from here, everything's pretty much connected. So we're just going to start curving it up a little bit. One thing that might help, by the way, I'm not. I'm just going to show you before I keep going, is if you do a really light line kind of showing where you want your um, horns to kind of go. You know what I mean? So you can do two lines like this, very lightly, just so you have an idea and like a map of a guide of where it's going. So that really helps uh, help me the first time. I just forgot to do it this time, but yeah, it'll help you know where you're going. So I'm just curving this a little bit. And then I'm gonna keep, now that I have my guideline, I'm gonna keep going in that direction and kind of do a little point. Like that. Now at this point, you can do another little one coming out. And then maybe another little one. So notice that it looks kind of like tree branches. However, they're a little bit more like smoother. And as I'm going back down, before I go all the way down, I'm going to add another one. With a little one here. So that's the most important thing. Even if you do make them look a little bit different is that they are going to have little branches kind of coming out from there. Oh, cool. Okay, yeah, I figured, cause they, they're pretty big. So I figured they did shed. <laughs> and, it was, and it's like, I seen pictures of mooses um, shedding their antlers and it's really like a horror movie. <laughs> it's a sight. Okay, well, good to know. And then I'm just gonna do one more here. Like that. They can definitely be more pointy than mine. I just made them kind of round at first, but now I'm gonna make them a little bit more pointy. Yeah, 
please do. That's awesome. I would love to see that. I love animals. And just seeing like real pictures of people that take in pictures of things that they've seen. I always miss, like I saw, I see wildlife all the time, but I never have my phone with me. <laughs> so that's going to inspire me to do it. Because I saw a baby fox and a raccoon, um, like in bright, broad daylight. And I didn't get to take a picture of them because I didn't have my phone. So it was my loss. It's okay. Okay. So we have this beautiful thing here. So the hard thing is to make it look the same. So you don't want to make it look the same. You'll notice that in the picture, I have them looking a little bit different. And that's okay. Because they're going to be in different angles. So this one is actually going to be a little bit more simple. But because I have my guideline, I'm just going to start adding it going up. Like that. And then another one. So it looks like this so far. Now, if you are able to make them look exactly the same on both sides, by all means, go ahead. That might look really cool. I just think it might look more interesting if they're kind of in different areas. Um, so it looks more organic. And then this one's going to go all the way up and have like, it almost looks like a hand. And then it's going to connect back. Mm, I think that's not thick enough. So I'm just going to make it a little bit more thick actually. Beautiful. And then you're always able to add more if you want to. I might add one more here. There. So they look really solid, but you wanna we wanna add some dimension into it. Um, some value um, to make them look much darker and much nicer. Um, so we're going to do that. The first thing you, you want to do is create very lightly with your pencil. You can start doing some lines inside of the of it. But the, most of the shading is going to come from the, the beginning of the antlers. So we're going to have it nice and dark here, like that. So whenever you're putting your shading like really, really dark, you want to put a lot of pressure with your pencil. 2B pencils are excellent for having a lot of control with that. And just darken the areas that you think might look more interesting. So for example, I wanna put more pressure around here and around here. So that it starts to kind of have that nice um, shading. I'm just going to add a little bit more lines here to the face. But like I said, you can definitely use the Q-tip to kind of help you along the way with softening some of the, if let's say you put down your pencil and it's too dark, you can always use your Q-tip. Now for the antlers, wherever there is, so the in, there's like a, a little bit of an overlap. We're gonna darken those areas so that it looks more realistic. I'm just darkening the, the, the whole thing itself. You don't want them to be super solid. You do want them to have these nice little lines inside of each other.
just going to darken it up. There should be a little bit of a shadow over here at the top, but not the very tip of it because you don't want that to be super dark. Okay, thank you, Colleen. <laughs> I appreciate that so much. I'm excited to see it. There we go. Perfect. So I'm just adding some texture to it. The texture can be just like very um, quick little lines around it. Like this. And you're basically going to do the same thing on the other side for this part right here. <laughs> no worries. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, like I said, there will be record. So this will be available for you guys to watch whenever. Even right now, if you feel like you missed a step, you can definitely rewind it. And it will just bring you back after to the live, um, like where, where I am right now. So I'm just darkening the areas where I think it, it might need it. So you don't need to darken too much on this one specifically, but maybe you, to make it more interesting, you can darken this one completely, right? So there's a little bit of a shadow. And then the rest of it can just have a little bit more of a texture. Kind of like you would put for like a wood. So like tree branches. And the more shadows you add to it, just the more contrast it's going to have. And you really want it to have, with drawings like this one, you do want to have nice contrast so that it looks not as flat, right? I actually think this part is a little bit too dark. So I'm going to keep my little foreheads hairs like a little bit lighter than I did on my original one but that's just a preference there you can always go back to the antlers as much as you need to like afterwards and keep adding as much shadows as you want I'm going to add a little bit more shadows over here like that So take your time with that part so that it looks nice and dark. You are putting a lot of more pressure on your pencil in order to make it look um, super uh, contrasty. Other parts of the body that will need some shading will be around the face. So some areas around here, you can add a little bit of shading. You can also darken the face a little bit by adding very lightly, you can add a little bit of pencil. And then you go back with your Q-tip and you kind of soften it up a little bit. So it looks a little bit more textured. So it has a little bit more of a tone. So I'm just adding little lines, super light. Having control of your pencil is good for these parts. So it just looks like it has a little bit more um, hair. There would be a little bit of a shadow behind the ear here. Not as strong as the other ones, but just a little bit. Okay, so now this part right here, the, the neck part is the very important part because it has this really intense um, sh shadow that will create a lot of contrast. Sorry, my dog is barking. 
So I'm just going to start with the using my pencil and like kind of like sideways. I'm just going to kind of start shading very messily. It doesn't have to be pretty. I'm just going to start adding these kind of like um, lines, soft lines around the body. The Sorry, not the whole body, just this area right here. We're going to go like this. So it definitely doesn't have to be super pretty, but just make sure you're using the side of your pencil. So not the front, not like this. You're using it like this. Kind of like you would if um, con uh, pastels or soft pastels, stuff like that. So you're going to do this kind of like hair texture around. And then when you get here at the top, then you're going to start putting pressure on your pencil. Like a lot of pressure. to create this beautiful dark shell. But you're also kind of flaring it out. So you're kind of softening it out a little bit so that it's not super, super harsh. And you can practice on like a piece before if you want, if you need to. It's not too bad. You just have to not be afraid of placing the the, um, the pencil down. But some of them might be a little harsh. So maybe you want to make them a little bit softer. So you can take your Q-tip and just kind of making them a little bit more soft. I kind of like the, the messy texture look, though. So it's really a preference thing if you like it better that way or not. <laughs> see so that shadow really is super important for this specific drawing because it will create that beautiful like um contrast I am actually using 2B for the whole picture because I wanted to show you guys that you can just use pencil for the whole thing. However, if you have a softer brush, like, um, you know, higher, like even 3B, 6B, use those because that's great. I think that will make it your life a little bit easier. I just wanted to show you how you can do it with a 2B pencil. They just tend to be a little bit harsher for sure. Um, so I'm not using an HB, sorry, I'm using a 2B pencil. HB, I feel I feel like would be a little too light. You definitely can use an HB though. It might just be hard to do the darkest parts with the HB. So as long as you have an, a 2B, you can do the whole thing with that. But definitely having like higher ones would work a lot more. Beautiful, yeah. So I would say use like an HB or a 6B for this area. I'm just kind of, that way you don't have to put a lot of pressure. You can just kind of put it down. And then using the Q, you can kind of drag it down a little bit. So it shades really nicely. There we go. So having a set definitely helps a lot. <laughs> but sometimes it's nice to be able to know that you can do it just with a pencil as well, one pencil. I went up to, um, where was it, Halliburton, and like up to the cottage, and I only had a 2B pencil, and that's why, to make this drawing, so I wanted to show how I did it with just the 2B pencil. Because I had forgotten my box of, of pencils when I went up there, and I was freaking out, and I was like, oh god, but then it worked out. So came out. <laughs> so now I'm adding a little bit of shadow to the inside of the ear. So I'm doing the same thing. I'm just kind of darkening in the inside and then softening it out a little bit. And you can do the same thing on this side as well. There we go. 
I'm just going to soften it a little bit. But yeah, so if you don't want it to be too texturized, you can definitely um, just make it less, uh, more soft with the Q-tips. So the main thing is that you want to make sure that this part right here, the front, um, or the chest area of the book is darker than the rest of the body. So you can definitely have a little bit of shading. Oops, sorry. You could definitely have a little bit of shading on the body as well over here. You just want it to be not as dark as the front. So I'm just going to soften it up a little bit. I forgot that I added a rock here. So <laughs> if you didn't add a rock, I probably didn't need to, but I think my paper was just a little bit longer than this one. So if you added a rock, you would do the same thing here. You would just add nice little contrast shading in certain areas. And that was one of the, like I've always gotten used to, was really, really used to um, shading with my, my finger. <laughs> You can't help it. Sometimes you just want to go in and do it. So it's definitely, but it's a good habit to just use not your fingers. Then you get used to it eventually. Don't get me wrong. I still do it once in a while. Sometimes I'll be like, oh. <laughs> okay. There we go. So we have our beautiful, um, book now we have to do we still have to do a little bit of the background but i just wanted to make sure i got all the little shading of the eyes and certain areas so the nose can be nice and dark but then you can go with your um a little eraser and you can erase whatever, wherever you want there to be like more of a highlight. Maybe over here. You'll, you'll notice how easy it is to erase with uh, or clean up your drawing um, when you don't use your finger because then the oils are not there. There we go. So he's kind of peeking through. He's not fully out. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. He's looking handsome. So now the placement of the trees are going to be kind of, um, they're kind of curved a little bit. That was just to give it more of an interesting look, but you can definitely have them looking um, a lot more different than mine. So maybe you want them to look a specific way. I left this area completely clear just because I wanted the antlers to be the highlight of the drawing for the most part. So I didn't add any trees around here, but you can add maybe, a, you could always add a moon or something, something unique if you want. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is there's going to be a bush right here on the corner. So I'm just going to, again, with the side of my pencil, because this bush is going to be nice and dark, I'm just going to start doing these little like jagged lines like that. So that it looks nice and messy. And then you can start shading in this little bush right here. My table's shaking too much, sorry. And just coloring in this area. Even though it's a small little area, it's still important because it's going to bring out your 
the details of your whole drawing. There. So it's just a little bush. Maybe your bush is a little bit bigger than mine. Maybe it's a little bit smaller. It doesn't really matter as long as there's kind of something there behind. <clears throat> okay. Now there is a tree kind of going out this way. It doesn't have to be super. We're just going to cut it off right over here. So whatever is farthest away would be lighter and whatever's closest to the deer is going to be darker. That's why this one's super dark because it's the closest and then the other ones are kind of shaded in much lighter. So this one is kind of in between. So you can start by adding, giving it some nice texture. I'm just using my pencil very loosely and kind of giving it that wooden look. Like that. And then I'm just kind of sh shading it in a little bit. So it doesn't have to be super pretty. It can be a little bit messy. But the reason it's going to look less messy is because I'm using my pencil in a soft way. So I'm not using it like this. I'm using it like this. Okay. Like I'm using the, the side of the tip. That's going to help you make your lines a lot softer. Okay, so keep that in mind. You can always go back with your Q-tip and shade it in a little bit more. Just like that. Like that. So now it's like, it's still shaded, but it's somewhere in between, right? You can shade this part a little bit darker. So there would be more of a shadow here. Just make sure it's not darker than your bush. So the tree can be dark. It's not as dark. There we go. Beautiful. So there's our first tree that is looking um, somewhere in the middle. Now there's going to be another bush area right here. So you want to start from here, from the chest. you're just doing these like squiggly broken lines but they don't have to be perfect okay because this bush is also going to be the same technique that we did over here remember how we did we kind of did like these flared shapes with our the side of our pencil but you can make your life easier and just use a, a thicker pencil, like a, a stronger pencil. So the higher it would be, the, the softer it would be. I'm just using my the sides to kind of give it that nice soft look. And I don't want this one too dark, even though it may be closer, but I still wanted to give it the illusion that it's a little bit farther out than this one. Right? So that's a good like rule, I guess. Whatever's closest would be darker. Whatever's farthest would be lighter. There we go. Looks nice, I think. It looks pretty. Nice and shaded. You can give it as much texture as you want. It's up to you. I kind of like it somewhere in between. 
A woodless pencil? Oh. Wow. What's a woodless pencil? <laughs> so like it's not made out of pen wood? As long as it's 2B, that's great. I haven't heard of those ones. There's so many different types that you can get, honestly. But let me know what that is, like a woodless pencil. I would love to know what that is. I guess it literally is what it means, what it says, which is woodless. And then I'm adding a little bit of shadow over here. There we go. And you can go as dark as you want. I mean, I think this is the darkest I can in. Oh, I see. Okay, so that's all lead. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, so that probably works really nicely with the with this technique then when you use it like this. Because it's all lead. Because what's stopping it, yeah. Yeah, that must be really nice. Because it's what's stopping it is um the wood, right? Oh, right here. So it gets really sharp when I do it the way that I'm doing it, like this. But I love using my pencils like that, so that's really good. I should get some of those. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure it's like super um, fragile then because it's all lead, right? Okay. Yeah. So... I'm going to try to get some of those because that sounds awesome. So now we just have to do the other trees. Um, this one is going to be the closest tree to us. So it's going to be nice and big. We're going to make it go up. And then it, maybe it's going to touch the, um, what do you call it, the antler. And then it's going to go out like that. And then the other side is going to also be coming up, but it's going to get smaller as it goes up. So just keep that in mind when you're drawing it, okay? I made mine too wobbly, so I'm just going to strain it out a little bit more. Like that. I think that's good. Mm, let me see if I can. There we go. beautiful and then you can either start coloring that one or you can add the other two trees would which are super light trees they're kind of coming out this way and this way and then very lightly they continue on this way it's maybe a little bit too small you can do as many as you want. Like if you want to have more trees, feel free to add as many as you like. There we go. But I think I like this many. Yeah. Perfect. So now we can just darken this one. This one's a little bit of a, a journey. <laughs> so I suggest doing it in batches, like layers. So I'm going to start with one layer first. Just using my pencil and kind of doing these rough lines across. So you don't have to start super harsh right away. You can just make it nice and give it that nice texture. And then you can start putting more pressure and more pressure as you go. But I'm still using my pencil sideways because I wanted to kind of help me out, help myself out, right? This is a good one to do with the bigger, um, with a bigger size, with a higher size. Like a, an 8B would be great for this tree. <laughs> so that way you don't have to worry too much about that. Oops. Too messy. It's okay if you get it in the antlers a little bit. You can always erase some of those things that you don't need there. Now, be careful when you're using like just lead and stuff. 
um, whenever you're using pencil, I like to have like a piece of paper on top so I don't smudge everything. I'm not gonna, obviously I can't do that because I want you guys to be able to see everything. But if when you're doing your drawing, having uh, another piece of paper kind of here so that you're not smudging it really helps. You can do some imperfections in the tree here and there. You can have it as dark as you want. Maybe you don't want it this dark. Maybe you want it a little bit lighter. That's okay too. As long as it's darker than the ones in the back. So the ones in the back would be nice, really light. So you can put a little bit of color and then use your Q-tip to kind of help your, you out. So that it looks nice in. And sometimes your Q-tip already has some, some lead, so you just can drag it out a bit. Because you want to give it that illusion that the trees are kind of in the back, right? Oh, that's a nice tree. It looks nice in texture. So all these lines kind of give it that nice wooden texture. But if you wanted to do a texture first and then color it in with your pencil, that's okay too. And then this tree is also going to have a little bit of shading. But you want to definitely soften it up a little bit. Especially the back ones, right? You want to use whatever you can to help yourself out. There. So this is your darkest part. That and the little bush right here and the little the chest area. So these three are kind of, you know, all together. But you can add stuff to it, like maybe a little moon here. I'm not going to do it, but I'm tempted to <laughs> because I tend to love drawing moons and or suns. Uh, but I'm not going to this time just to keep it close to the original. And then let me just darken this a little bit more. There we go. That's cute. Yeah, there we go. I don't think he needs a any more shading. I could shade a drawing just like with watercolors. Like I tend to just keep going and going <laughs> until I can't. But yeah, this one doesn't take too long because it's a drawing. But um, I do have um, another horse event coming up on the 29th, I think. So you guys are feel free to check that one out. Does anybody have any questions? I'll assume everybody's okay. So just remember, you can definitely rewind it. And then once I finish the live, you'll be able to watch it at your, at your own um, speed. I always um, super appreciate any tips. I'm just sending my PayPal um, account for anybody that would like to tip me. Um, but yeah, it was so fun having everybody here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you can, post a picture if you want to. I love seeing everybody's horse drawings. They were so beautiful. Everybody did so great. Um, so I would love to see some book drawings as well if you want to post one. Uh, feel free to do that. And thank you so much, um, Colleen. I think your name is Colleen. Yes. <laughs> I appreciate the picture. And um, yeah, let me know if you guys have any questions, even if you don't have them right now. Um, you can always ask questions on the group as well. Okay, perfect. Yes. Thank you, Colleen. <laughs> okay, everyone. Well, I hope you have a beautiful weekend and you have um, 
fun drawing this drawing with me. And like I said, I hope to see you guys next time. <laughs> Have a good night, everybody. Bye.